Good afternoon, everybody. I hope uh, you're all feeling well. I'm honored to be before you today to speak about uh, a controversial topic, which is luck and how can we influence luck. Who feels lucky today? Very few, okay. So, after these years, I mean, approaching 50 so I believe I can share some of my experiences stuff that can inspire generations and I assure you that you're all lucky because today we have all the technology all the available information that you can share you have mentors you have TEDx you have people are helping generations to learn from their wisdom and imagine a world without continuous accumulated knowledge. So first thing, I wanna talk about uh, something that you have to do to be lucky. Get the ticket, get your degree. And to surprise you, today, a single degree might not be enough. Maybe you have to have a double major I'm sure you heard about stories related to people who made it top, people in the world who dropped schools and made it. But maybe you didn't hear about other millions who dropped school and didn't make it. So people will always talk about you know, these 20, 100 people who are top CEOs in the world or leaders that dropped school and, and, and were able to do that. So. Be ready, get your degree, and that's your first ticket to be lucky. I started my first company, Pella Group, uh, while I'm studying at university last year. It was a multimedia company, and then I got uh, introduced. My brother, who lives in Silicon Valley, uh, told me that a friend of, of, of him that is interested in multimedia and, and wants to collaborate. At the time, multimedia was, was, was a big thing. So he arranged for me a meeting. And then while I was decided to travel and meet the guy to discuss business with him, my father, my late father was an artist and gave me a business card and told me, talk to this guy. He's a Jordanian guy. He lives in Saudi. And and see if he needs anything, try to meet him. So I went the first day I met with an with, with important guy and he's top notch and he was young, but he was very shrewd and we spent the whole day, you know, he was you know, asking about details, business plan, and he was very tough. So the second day I was about to travel and I remembered the business card. And I said, okay, let me call the guy because, you know, let me see who he is. I didn't know who he is. I called the guy and I told him that I'm, I'll be traveling. Do you need anything in a few hours? He said, no, 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 no. And so he insisted that I want to meet you. And I told him, I don't have time. And he said, no, no, I'll send you a card. Don't worry. Ten minutes later, latest S-Class came with the driver. And I went and there was like, you know, big company apparently happened to be the CFO of one of the top three companies in Saudi Arabia. I had a good meeting with him. I showed him my product. This group on the uh, school, he said, I want to introduce you to our CEO. He's very interested in, in, in e-learning. The CEO came. We spent like 20 minutes meeting, gave me four uh, lessons. And he said, if you can translate these lessons 
into an interactive multimedia uh, lessons, we're interested to do business with you. I felt comfortable, they're organized. And he said, by the way, send me a business plan, send me the lessons in a week time, send me the business plan. And I said, okay. And I didn't know what business plan means, but I told him, okay, I'll send you. I called my brother immediately. What's the business plan? He said, don't worry, don't worry. And he's here, thanks to him. Uh, so he sent me a draft, a template for a business plan, and I was able, you know, a small company, we did the voiceover, we did the animation, like we were four, four people in Wadi Saqqa, you know, a small team, and, and we were able to deliver, and he loved the, uh, loved the lessons, and in a week time, he transferred the money and started Minhaj Education and Technologies. Minhaj became one of the top leading e-learning companies in the region. And, and, and we were able to attract 5.5 million students. We did projects all over the world, in the United States, in the Philippines, and the whole Gulf region. And that was a great success for us. I mean, if I didn't make that call, I wouldn't meet that guy. So you have to be there. And when, after that, we got a contract with, with, with Microsoft. And there was a, a, a visit for uh, Bill Gates to Jordan. And we were already engaged with uh, uh, Microsoft in automating and doing multimedia for Microsoft ICT curriculum. And when Mr. Gates visited Jordan, I said, I wanna, you know, protocol told me that you have four minutes. I said, I wanna give him something. And at the time he was the richest man in the world. So what can I give him? I went to sit down, you know, the Jordanian tradition of putting the sand. And all what I did is when I looked him up, apparently, the next day was his 50th birthday. So that's, that's a big event. So I just wrote Eid Said Bill, happy birthday, 50 Bill, and, and gave him that. And I said, oh, wow. And he spent 14 minutes instead of four minutes. And protocol was like pushing me his time. Was, you know how precious his time is. And he loved it and sent me back a letter that he's very thankful and he put it on his office, he loved it, it's meaningful, you know. And I told him just to keep a piece of Jordan with you to remember. If I didn't do that Google search and you, I mean, you have to do the step. You make your own luck, okay? This is how you make it. But yes, people are lucky, yeah, you, can you influence your luck? I'll leave that answer after we, we discuss this. Here's another picture with uh, Richard who owns Virgin. Actually, I was in Dubai. I was in the mall, I'm wearing casual stuff. But I saw like a big, big gathering and you know, a lot of people there. And I said, I wanna see what's, uh, what's going on. And I saw Richard. I said, oh, Richard, how are you? Can we have, can we have a, a selfie? I said, sure. I took a selfie with him. And then a lot of people started, he said, sorry, and I was the only one who was able to, to get the selfie with him. And also, you know, that's during the WEF uh, when I had the selfie. Then, after Minhaj's success, e-learning is, is, is a long journey. We did great uh, achievements, but yet the life cycle of, of education in general, your product is your student. So it takes usually 13, 14 years to judge if your product is good because that's a student. If they are going to the best positions, and then you are succeeding. But in healthcare, also, I did my research to see the future. I said health IT is, is recession proof, it is needed. If you go to at the time, Yahoo and search the top needed job for the next 20 years, you will see 
eight out of 20 are related to health IT. So I accepted the challenge of starting Hakim. So this is a book that I highly recommend for every student and every guy to, to read this book, which is Who Moved My Cheese? So change is good. I accepted the challenge. And today, Hakim is the national healthcare program for Jordan with over 7.5 million live records. And now Hakim claim. <laughs> thank you very much. Also, Hakim claim is is another project that we will be launching soon, is automating the whole interaction between insurance companies and the providers, and creating a lifetime health record for each Jordanian and non-Jordanian, whoever lives in Jordan. Drug-drug interactions, we all suffer from getting the files, and it's, it's a hassle. Even vaccinations, you have kids. It will manage all your or your health record in a single place and you have the access for it and you can upload if you travel to Germany, to the US, get any lab results, any radiology, you can upload it to your system and keep that privacy for you. So that's, that's another project that I'm very proud of uh, that we did, Hakim. And, and we got you know an article in Forbes and I never paid for any magazine actually never paid for any advertising. So that's something that was interesting for Forbes and uh, I hope I was on the other side, Ba'imit Atria, the, the most, the richest people, but, but I didn't. So, another thing, I believe 90% of success is, is being there. You have to be there. A couple of months, I got a call, invitation, from one of my previous partners. He's a big guy in Saudi big group, top five group, and it was his, his son's uh, uh, engagement, or actually marriage. So he invited me, and I didn't have a visa, and it's been like seven years I didn't go to Saudi. And he said, we will manage everything for you. Oh, I tried, I applied for the visa, and they told me, oh, we have a problem. You have to have six months valid in your passport. I went to the airport myself because that was the it was Friday, and I renewed my passport and went back at night and sent them, and I got the visa the second day. Anyway, if I didn't do that, the next day after the wedding, I sent a friend of mine also who's one of the big, I mean, guys in Saudi, top groups, and I told him that I'm in Saudi. He said, oh, great, we want to see you. It's been like 15 years, and... So he said, we, ha we have, a, we have a, an event today at, at, at 7 p.m. Some guests are coming. I said, okay. He said, I'll send you the driver. He sent me his driver. Again, nice as class. And, you know, I enjoyed it. And went to, uh, apparently, I mean, I've seen cars, I mean, government cars. And, and there was like six ministers there and five people that with a network of over $160 billion. And I, I was able to attend that and make relations. So I, if I didn't go there, didn't renew my passport and give up, I would have missed this opportunity. And now I'm re-engaged with these guys doing business in Saudi. It's very important nowadays. And we hope that the collaboration will expand. So you have to be there and always show up. Don't miss any opportunity. Another advice is, is, is that you have to be crazy, okay? This is an interesting uh, story as well. When the launch of Hakim, it was a coincidence that the World Economic Forum coming from the Dead Sea and Mr. John Chambers in the picture there, who was chairman and CEO of Cisco Systems, was coming as a keynote speaker on the IT sector uh, to Jordan. And I said, why don't we, I mean, invite him to, to demonstrate to him what we achieved in, in automating the healthcare sector? He said, are you crazy? I mean, Prince Hamza is there. And the, the, this guy said, helicopter, why not? Let's use a helicopter. 
My chairman told me, good luck. Call the protocol and see. I called the protocol and told them, let's have the launch of uh, the World Economic Forum, Forum from Prince Hamza Hospital. And he said, and logistics, okay, helicopter, let's see. They sent the team, they had a look at what we achieved, and they agreed. They agreed. And I made it. And it was a no-go. Impossible to take such a guy, I mean, you know, with his majesty to go and go to the Dead Sea. And he was supposed to, s to spend four minutes at the clinic. He spent 44 minutes at the clinic. And he said, we don't have this in the U.S. It's amazing what I've seen. And I said immediately, can I quote you? He said, yeah, quote me, and I'll promote you all over the region. I'm happy to promote you. So anyway, let me ask you again. Do you think you can influence your luck? Who feels lucky? More people, good. We need positive energy. And I believe you can make your own luck, be crazy, and thank you very much for TED and PSUT for arranging this. I'm very honored to share this experience. Thank you very much.